we're going to go through some examples and what our goal is going to be is to predict the reaction mechanism SN1 or SN2 and then predict the product. In this first one we have this organobromide with a chiral center. First thing to look is at the substitution of the organohalide. This is secondary. What mechanisms can a secondary halide do? It can do SN1 or SN2. So that doesn't help us narrow down the mechanism. Next, let's look at the nucleophile. We have sodium cyanide. If you break this up, it's Na plus Cn minus. That's a negatively charged nucleophile. That's a strong nucleophile. That prefers SN2. Now we know that strong nucleophiles can do SN1, but SN2 is preferred. Finally, the solvent, DMSO, is polar aprotic. Polar aprotic solvents favor SN2. So what you want to do is find a match. And our match here, SN2, 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 these conditions lead us to an SN2 mechanism. So in this case, we're going to use our nucleophile, add it to the carbon, lose our leaving group. Remember the nucleophile adds from the back side of the leaving group. So the CN will be back instead of out. There's your product. Since it's SN2, we get an inversion of stereochemistry. In our second example, we have this organoiodide in the presence of methanol. Our iodide here is primary. That can only do an SN2 reaction. Our nucleophile is methanol. That's a weak nucleophile. Weak nucleophiles can only do SN1 reactions. So in this case, we have a mismatch. We don't have two mechanisms aligning. So in this case, there's no substitution reaction. In our third example, we'll use the same organoiodide, but I'm going to switch the methanol to a strong nucleophile. So here is the primary iodide, which is SN2. Now we have a strong nucleophile. That's going to favor SN2. And we have a polar aprotic solvent. That favors SN2. So now we have a match between our mechanisms. So this will undergo the SN2 reaction. And I'll use the methoxide. Add it to this carbon, displace the iodide. We're not forming a new chiral center here, so you don't have to worry about stereochemistry. And there's your products. Now, if you were to have had, for example, water as a solvent, SN2 reactions aren't favored in water, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. So solvent will help, and it helps to favor things, but don't let the solvent preclude a reaction from happening. So if you used water, that may favor um, SN1, but we know the reagent and substrate favor SN2. So the water would kind of slow the reaction down. It wouldn't be a smart way to do it, but the reaction could still take place. So basically just don't use solvent as a be-all, end-all deciding factor. In this example, we have a secondary bromide. And because it's secondary, it can be SN1 or SN2. Then we have a weak nucleophile, methanol. That can only do SN1. So 
This leads us to the conclusion that the mechanism must be SN1. Now the other thing with this is that in this case the methanol is both the nucleophile and the solvent. And when you have a reaction like this where the nucleophile is the solvent, this is often termed a solvolysis reaction. So since we know it's SM1, we can walk through the mechanism to get to the product. The first step is loss of the leaving group to give the carbocation. So let's draw that. Now anytime, let me draw the bromide as well. Now anytime we have a carbocation, check for rearrangement. This is a secondary, secondary cation. If we do a methyl shift, we can get a tertiary carbocation, which is more stable. And that does happen. So we get this intermediate. Now that we're at our most stable carbocation, the nucleophile will add, and that's methanol. So use a lone pair on the oxygen. That will add to the positively charged carbon. And we'll draw the intermediate we get here. Now in this case, the oxygen has a proton on it and a CH3 group. It will also bear a positive charge. So to finish this up, we need to get rid of this proton from the oxygen. So we need one more step where you react this with just a base in the solution or you can use a molecule of methanol. Either way that comes in and takes this proton to give you the final product which is a neutral substitution product. Since we use the B I'll just draw BH plus as my byproduct.